Hey guys, today I'll be mixing things up a little bit. We're going to be looking at a Unity scripting tutorial, and we'll show a few examples of possible game mechanics from there. So today, we're looking at the Scene Manager, a new class that has appeared in Unity 5.3, so it's something really recent this year, and uh, it's pretty much just changing the way we load scene while the game is running. So prior to Unity 5.3, we used to load scenes using the application .load scene call. This is now obsolete, meaning that it will eventually be removed completely from Unity. So if you wish to continue working on your project, you'll have to change the way you do the loading. Now of course, this does not affect your previous build. Your old Unity apps are still going to work if they're built. Alright, so on to the specifics. The scene manager class is stored inside of the scene management namespace. You will have to include this in every script where you want to use the scene manager or the brand new scene class. Let's take a look at them. Okay, so here it is. Now, there is a lot of stuff in there, so I'll just highlight the one I use the most. For the one I skipped, a small definition is written next to the name of that function. The scene class is straightforward. It holds information about the scene, like its name, its current state, its path, and a very nice function that gets all the object composing that scene. Now on to the scene manager. There is a few functions out there that I use quite a lot. Get active scenes, it returns you a scene object, really useful to have. Get scene at, returns you a scene object again, but you pass it a in parameter defining which scene you want, taken from the build settings. Get scene by path might be useful if you don't know how many scenes you'll have and if you're loading from a resource folder. So let's just assume it's a game that uh, it's user generated content and your user creates new maps. Those maps are stored inside of the resource folder and you can do a get scene by path to actually access them. And now on to the most important one, the one that pretty much just forces us to use the scene manager. It is the load scene function. Now load scene takes in a scene index or a scene name as a parameter. But it also takes in a second parameter, which is a load scene mode. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting. What you're probably used to do is you load a new scene, destroying the previous one completely. You now have the possibility to load a scene on top of your current scene without destroying the previous one. And this opens the window to a lot of cool new way to create a nice game flow. Before we move on to the example, I'd just like to remind you that there is a callback called on level was load and it gives you an end of the index of the scene that was just loaded. I'm just throwing that information out there so in case you, you've just loaded a new scene and you have a game manager that purses through all the scenes, then you can know which one you've just loaded having this kind of uh, callback. Now on to the example. Alright, so let's take a look at what we have right here. In this first scene, I have a menu. It's a really simple menu. It goes from, um, depending on which button you press, it goes from here to say the shop or the progress or the level tab. Now, this is not my game scene. It's just like the, the actual menu, the first menu. If I show you my game scene really quickly, it actually looks like that. It's a simple canvas with stuff in it. And um, let me show you what it gives us in the game. What I'm doing is whenever I'm pressing on play, whenever I'm actually loading the menu game, I have two scenes running on at the same time, and it just does a sweet transition like this. So let's look at that again, and I'll just pause it midway. As you can tell right now, my game scene is actually scrolling from um, wherever it was. So it actually scrolls from up here to the center of my view. And it does that as I'm loading it, but in order for this to happen, I need to have the other scene uh, rolling, rolling as well. And this is just one way that I can actually use this new multi-scene function. So as you can tell up here, menu, my menu is all there, so my four screens are there. And then the game actually just goes from up here and scrolls down. As soon as my um, game scene takes the whole canvas, the whole view, I actually unload, as you can tell, I unload my game scene and now it's gone. Oh, sorry, my menu scene. Now all I have right now is my game scene. I can just play my game. Alright, so let's look at another example. I will quickly open up another project. And this one is a little bit more complex. It's for bigger games. So let me just show you what I have right here. I have this kind of uh, setup scene. And in here, I have a player. 
that moves with my input. Let me just show you real quick. A player that moves with my input, I have um, this huge piece, this huge uh, mesh. I have a bridge, and on the other side of that bridge, there is another huge mesh. Now, um, in these type of games, if you have a bigger level, if you have a big open world level, you could say, what is going to happen is if you just keep all of those um, in memory, if you just keep all of those mesh in memory, then they're being rendered even though they're not really seen, you know? So you need to actually improve your game performance if you want to have a bigger level. Now, what I did here is I actually split all of them into different scenes. So this thing here is a single scene. The thing that is actually flashing right now, that is a single scene. Now, if I go over here, my bridge is a single scene. Now, this is a really small object, but I'm actually using this as a transition, and you'll see why in a moment. And now over here, this whole thing is actually just a single scene. So all of these three objects are scenes, but there's also one more thing. My player itself is actually in a single scene. Let's actually open them up uh, one by one so you can actually have a look at what I'm talking about. So right here, I've got my player scene. It is a simple um, player just standing there, and also there is a main camera that is used for viewing the player. The next one is this object. Now I know the lighting is not really good. We can't. You see, I don't. I don't have a directional light. I don't have anything else but the mesh in there. Uh, second, I have a bridge. That's the bridge I was talking about in the middle. And then third, I have this object. Now something really cool I'd like to show you is that my bridge, right here, actually has two things, two hidden things. It has two box collider, as you can tell right now if I just toggle them on. There's one here and there's also one there. Now, um, I use them as triggers to actually load and unload the previous and the next scene. Alright, so enough talking, let's go see that in action. Right here, I have my game scene. This is where I actually want to be transferred to. This is going to be the real game scene. It has a directional light because that's something it's gonna, that is going to be um, across every single scene I have. And I also have a game manager. Now let's quickly open up what is inside of that game manager. The game manager here uh, that I've called Scene Manager Tutorial is pretty much something that has a load and also a unload function on it. And if we take a quick look at this, the only thing it really does is a load scene and it loads it in the additive manner. So it's not actually removing the previous one, it just adds it on top of the previous one. And then down here, I have a unload, so I give it a name, say I want to unload the player, I could say unload uh, in quotation player, and it would remove my player from the actual scene. And also my camera, because my camera is part of the player scene. Now all I do up here is whenever the game starts in this scene, I decide to load up my player and then the scene 1, scene 1 being the, um, the first object I spawn on. And I also decide to load the bridge. Now let's quickly look at something. So let's say I don't spawn the bridge and I just boot this scene. As you can tell, I have my player and um, pretty much just the only first scene right here. And that is it. Now if I just go back in my code and I uncomment that, I am now loading both my first scene but also the bridge. And now on my bridge, I've got these two objects, and I'll quickly show you the script on them. Um, they basically have this script called load trigger, and as you can tell, they are trigger colliders. So it pretty much does, okay, so if you have a string um, load name, if it's not, not defined, then you're going to call the function inside of the scene manager tutorial, which is our game manager. And if you have something to unload, then you're gonna start a coroutine because you can't do that in a callback. For some reason, Unity freezes. So I just put it down there, but it pretty much just does in a, in um, unload after 0 0.10 second. So it's calling these functions. Now, the first one I have up here is actually loading the scene number one. So it's loading this thing and it's unloading the third scene, which right now is not there. And the second trigger collider is actually loading the third scene, the one we can't see and it's unloading the scene number one. 
Now remember, I can't actually uh, load two of those to the same one because in my scene manager tutorial, I check if it is loaded or not first. So if it is not loaded, you go ahead and you load it. And as for the unload, if it is loaded, you unload it. Now let's actually have a look in the game what kind of result we get. So I'm going to be walking up to my first, my very first uh, wall, and it's right here. It does pretty much nothing. I just go through it. And now if I move on to my second one, which is right about there, as you can tell, I've just deleted everything behind me and I've loaded my new scene. Now usually what we try to do when we do this load and unload is to distract the player. So you might have an animation playing on your player, some kind of cinematic, and while that cinematic is happening, you're unloading the stuff behind you and you're loading new stuff in front of you. And of course, you're gonna try to have this as seamless as possible. So that's what we try to do uh, whenever we make some more quality games, I guess. But guy, yeah, that is only another way to use the scene manager and there is plenty of other ways. You just have to find them, just gotta be creative. Um, like I said, you could be making user-generated content and um, actually just load them from using a path, so maybe just a string. You could be loading them from your web server. You can be loading them from pretty much anywhere. So guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. If you did like the video, then please leave me a like. Really appreciate that as always. And if you have any comment or question, you can post them in the comment section below. Other than that, please check out the Patreon if you wish to support me in whatever I'm trying to do with this channel. Links are pretty much just everywhere in the description and on the channel. So guys, again, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next episode.